Yeah. And so, so something you and I have talked about a lot is every time you write a book, I'm always fascinated by the the avenue you take to determine what stories you want to tell next. So like for people who somehow I'm everyone listening in here, I'm sure is aware of your work, but you oh, pick okay. these these women in history who kind of haven't gotten their proper due or have stories about them that people don't know, like the Agatha Christie one, like then you unfold them and you un- and you unpack them and you you dive into such rich detail everything and I'm always so fascinated by that but I'm I'm curious with the first ladies yeah how like did Victoria's interest in politics help shape your decision to write this together I guess that kind of take me through how you did, the two of you decided we're gonna get back together we're gonna get the gang back together and we're Gangs going to on the road. <laughs> yeah. yeah so how did that come about um, well, it's a great question. Of course, Adam, as always, you're asking questions that nobody else asks, um, which I love so much. Um, yes and no. I guess, the, the, you know, for people who haven't read the book that are listening, the First Ladies is about the friendship between Eleanor Roosevelt, who we all know, and a woman that most people in the white community don't know, but she's very well known in the black community. And that's Mary McLeod Bethune. She was um, the 15th um, born in her family, first born free. Um, she became very well educated, started a college um, that is now one of the biggest and best HBCUs, Bethune Cookman in Florida. And she became a well known advocate for equality. But our story is really about their friendship. Like they were like secret BFFs, you mm-hmm. know, at a time of segregation when black and white people were not supposed to shake hands, let alone sleep over at each other's houses. You know, I mean, that would have just like been unheard of. And what the, all the work that they did together, kind of behind the scenes to advance equality. And um, so the, the Victoria and I started out, we, we, you know, we knew we wanted, we had such an extraordinary experience writing the personal library. And we knew we had many, many more books in us and we do yeah. have many books in us. And, um, but something happened when we were starting to promote at the very beginning um the personal librarian we we knew people would be fascinated with Belle Costa Green who if people haven't read that book she's she was the personal librarian of JP Morgan mm-hmm. she ran his personal private library which was like the world's best collection Massive. um not your average library and um but she only was able to do that because she she had her identity she was a black woman passing as white um so you know we knew what well, we knew people would be fascinated when we were out finally able to talk about Belle um, about Belle. But what we didn't bargain for was the depth of people's fascinations about us mm. and about friendship. On the road, I mean, at least at the beginning, it was maybe a quarter, then it became like a third, and then like a half. People's questions were about our, our friendship, about our writing process, about our conversations, about it was crazy. And mm-hmm. and you would, the, the one-on-one comments we would get. And so we realized that that people had this hunger they saw, we have, and if Victoria were here, you would see it in person. We have a very unique, very close friendship. I mean, yeah. it's it's sisterhood and it really is um, because of what we've gone through in writing and in terms of the depth and uncomfortableness of the conversations we've mm-hmm. had, we literally will talk about any topic together. Yeah. Um, it's very, it's very unique and people see that and feel it. And quite honestly, they want it mm-hmm. They're for that. And so when we set out to write the first ladies, we wanted to honor that hunger that we saw. Um, and we very intentionally wanted to set out to select a topic that would allow us to explore some of those things. Mm. So it's explore something that we both feel very strongly about, which is that we need to have difficult, uncomfortable conversations together with Mm -hmm. somebody different than ourselves in order to develop empathy and bridges between races. And, um, and that isn't happening. Instead, we're more siloed than ever. Yes. And it's becoming more and more the case. And um, so, you know, I had, we had always, Victoria has been enamored with Mary McLeod Bethune since her childhood. Like Mm -hmm. I said, she's really well known in the black community, not very well known in the white community. Mm -hmm. And I, I was doing some digging around and I learned about the friendship between Mary and Eleanor. Not, not, it wasn't easy to find because there's really not very much about it out there. There were a couple news articles, a couple snippets, but you could get like an 800 page book on the Roosevelt and not see one mention of Mary McLeod Bethune. And yet she was honestly one of Eleanor's best friends. 
And, and that very fact was even fascinating to me, the way in which their friendship was buried, you know, because mm-hmm. these women were trying to hide it. In fact, they were trying to do the opposite. They were trying to normalize equality by appearing together very publicly. And once we kind of got dug into it, we were like, my gosh, this, their story is amazing. Mm-hmm. And it is in some ways an exploration of the same sorts of conversations, growth, openness, um, empathy mm-hmm. that Victoria and I have experienced in our own work. 